Shalom, shalom, shalom. Greetings to all viewing and listening in. Toda, thank you for listening. Um, we're back with another video. Uh, in this video, we're going to take another look into DNA. Um, we will look into other things uh, besides DNA. But right now, that's the topic that we on. But I do want to get into some more historical things later on. Uh, but this uh, video in particular, I want to focus in and zoom in on uh, Khazarian burials where actual elites, they, they look at the burial sites and they see uh, what's buried in there. <clears throat> and when they find certain items like uh, of high value and quality, they can tell what status this, this uh, person had. So they found uh, burials of elites and they've uh, recorded the uh, DNA hablo groups showing uh, where they descend from. So we're going to look into some of those things today and we'll uh, dispel some some rumors as well as we go through this. And we'll also uh, dig dig deep into the uh the Khazars and, and their lineage, their DNA, because this channel is for all things Khazaria because they're dope people. They're, they're cool, and um, we celebrate their heritage. We also celebrate the Israelites. So let's get it in. So the first paper I want to get into today is why chromosome haplogroup diversity in Khazar burials from southern Russia. Okay, this is a, a 2020 uh, paper. Let's go into the abstract. It says genetic studies of archaeological burials open up new possibilities for investigating the cultural historical development of ancient populations, providing objective data that can be used to investigate the most controversial problems of archaeology. In this work, we analyze the Y chromosomes of nine skeletons recovered from elite burial mounds attributed to the 7th to 9th centuries of the Khazar Khaganate in the, in the modern Rostov region. Excuse me. Genotyping of polymorphic microsatellite loci or loci, loci of the Y chromosome made it possible to establish that among the nine skeleton study Three individuals had R1A haplogroup, so we we know that. Uh, we talked about this in our other videos. Um, we're going to get more into R1A as well, but now we're going to see other lineages. So let's continue. Two had C2B. That's a that's a more mongoloid uh, group. That's more um, of the uh, Chinese and the Mongols. One had G2A. G2A, that's an early farmer. They came from the Near East and then they went into Europe and brought farming over there. N1A, we read about N1A in the last paper. Those were a part of the Fino Ugric group. They mixed with the R1A as well from early time. We even spoke on how the Khazars could have been a Fino Ugric Turkic group. We have Q. We know Q is major in the populations of um, the Native Americans. So that's interesting. But we also know that there's possibility that one of the major Turkish tribes, so you had a major Turkish tribe called the Ashina and one called the Ashide, I think. I think that's the proper term. The Ashide had the Q Hablo group. So this is a major Turkic branch as well. Uh, what else do they say here? And R1B have Y have little groups. We know R1B started off with the Yam, uh, Yamnaya culture, also was in the coded where culture very close to R1A. We see R1B certain branches within uh, the Bash uh, the Bashkir Turks, so they was there too. R1B get got went everywhere for real, for real. All right, such results were noteworthy for the mixture of West Eurasian and East Asian patrilineal lineages in these samples. The Y chromosome data are consistent 
with the results of the craniological study and genome-wide analysis of the same individuals and showing mixed genetic origins for the early medieval Khazar nobility. These findings are not surprising in light of the history of the Khazar Khaganate, which arose through its separation from the Western Turkic Khaganate and established in the North Caucasus and East European steppes. Eventually, we'll do a video on the Gok Turks. This is called the, the, uh, the First Turk uh, Empire. This is where the culture of being a Turk even comes from. Uh, they rebe they uh, rebelled against their uh, rulers, who uh, some say became the uh, the Huns and the Avars, and they were running over to the uh, to the west. So this is all interesting uh, information that we read here. And so you know, I like to make my videos on a little on the shorter side a little bit. So I'm not going to read the whole papers, but I will bring out excerpts of them that I think are very interesting. So since we're talking about burials here, I want to read this excerpt from the, uh, is this the introduction? Yes, the introduction. It says, an elite military burial was typically placed in its own mound where ritual ditches being dug around and latitudinally oriented gray pit with a lining. The deceased were stretched out on their backs with their heads oriented in an east to west direction and accompanied by the symbolic burial of a bridled riding horse in the form of a scarecrow from a whole skinned horse head with left foot bones and hooves. The stuffed animals were placed in the gray pit so that they imitate the position of a lying horse. An indicator of high social rank was a diverse uh, inventory of burial goods, including luxury and prestige items such as metal belts, silver and girdled vessels, jewelry, and Byzantine gold coins. The latter were used not for their intended purpose, but rather as status objects in the graves. So we see here uh, the very Scythian-like culture that they had burying themselves with horses. Uh, uh, and very and celebrating that uh, horse riding culture. Okay, all right. So right here we get location, dating, and the uh, the race of the examined skeletons, and we see that they're a mixed Asian and European descent. And this makes sense because we've seen that they were uh, some Arwanes there. Uh, we had some C's some cues so this this makes sense all right so here we see where they got the burials from and then we see the haplogroups. groups so we see here some why haplogroup group matches that the, that they uh what that match with certain skeletons we see uh some of their descendants in India, Spain, China, some of them in Lithuania, Hungary, Slovakia, those areas, the Slavic areas, some in a uh, kind of mixed Slavic, uh, Central Asian area. That's that's a very uh, mixed one, number 531. And then we got some uh, Russian, uh, uh, Eurasian steppe people that's mixing with them. So we see, you know, the general area of what we've been looking at it, it seems to make sense. As we see with number 1251, that skeleton, he has R1A. Now, we don't have a suspicious subclade, but we see that he's R1A. We don't have any data for his, uh, his race. We don't know if he was more Asian looking or European looking. But what we do see is that he has matches in Hungary. I know we were looking into Hungary, so that's very cool to see. And uh, cool places such as Lithuania, Slovakia, Belgium, Switzerland, India, Russian Federation, and Poland. Showing how, how wide uh, the, the branch of those uh, Scythian peoples went. So let's go to the next paper here. Excavated DNA from two Khazar burials. So these are two Khazar burials. Uh, and, and we're going to see that these are elites. This is why I have the hypothesis that uh, Z93 is the elite 
lineage within the Khazar. So let's go into this abstract to understand a biological tribal affiliation in terms of why chromosomal haplogroups, clay, clay, uh, subclades, and haplotypes of two excavated Khazar bone remains in the lower Don region in south of Russia. We have extracted and analyzed their DNA and showed that both belong to haplogroup R1A and the subclade Z93. The pattern could be considered typically Turkic and not a Jewish DNA lineage. That's going to be important. That's going to be important to uh, point out here because that's one of the main points here. We want to show you the separation between uh, Khazars who are really uh, from those those branches of Eastern Europe, those branches of Central Asia, um, th those branches separate from the Jewish lineages and how uh, if there are uh, Jews with these branches, according to our model, the Japhetic lineages, they could be converts or, or they could have come from Khazaria. But let's continue here. The haplotypes indicate that both Khazars were unrelated to each other in a sense that their common ancestor lived as long as 1500 to 2500 years earlier than them. In the middle of the second millennium BC, beginning of the first millennium BC, during typically Scythian times or somewhere earlier, their haplotypes are unrelated to well-known Jewish haplotypes of haplogroup R1A. See, there is a R1A Jewish haplogroup, uh, haplogroup, but we'll get into that later. And as we see here, that even though these two uh, Khazars had Z93, they were unrelated to each other because even then their common ancestor goes way back. The discovered subclass R1A Z93 and haplotypes from the two Khazar burials one of the early Khazar and another of the late Khazar times, are likely to be assigned to Turkic nomadic tribes, which migrated between Central Asia and the Altai region in particular, and the Black Sea area since the middle of the second millennium BC through the first millennium CE and some later. See the Z93 branches, they were majority in the Altai region, going over into the Urals. And the two, uh, 280 branch where I come from was from the Urals all the way over to uh, the East Germany, Western Poland area. So this is like a far reaching area of the Scythians and the Fino Ugric people as well, but the people who would later become Turks as well. They belonged apparently to different tribes in different haplogroups, among them haplogroups C, G, Q, R1A, and R1B. So we see the same thing here. However, thus far, only haplogroup R1A was discovered among ancient excavated DNA of the Scythians and related tribes. The R1A branches are, are probably the uh, original Khazars and that the other branches uh, at, were added on as well. At least that's my hypothesis. This study describes ancient R1A haplogroup in two Khazar skeletons dated about 1200 and 1300 years before present, earlier and later Khazars. Though the two belong to rather distant DNA lineages with their common ancestor who lived some 1500 to 2000 years before them, both the Khazars, R1A Z93, were unrelated to ancestors of present day ethnic Russians, Ukrainians, Belarus, Poles and other Slavic peoples of Habla group R1A. Predominantly subclads are R1A C280 and R1A M458. These would be other tribes. Now, uh, Khazaria was a mostly ethnic population. So this is how I believe that R1A Z93 was an elite branch of Khazars and, and, uh, and possibly the leading group. I know there's also uh, some who believe it's Q. Q was probably also among the leadings because um, because the Ashida clan that we talked about. As well as Scandinavians of R1A. There are, however, many peoples with a rather large share of R1A Z93 who speak Turkic languages and who seem rather closely related to the DNA lineages of the excavated Khazars. 
Some of them live in the Caucasus, some on the former Scythian and Khazar land, and in the area of the Volga River, such as the Tartars and the Bashkirs. We talked about the uh, peoples of that area. It should be noted that according to DNA gene genealogy data, none of the two ancient Khazars belong to the Jewish Y-DNA lineage. So we're going to get into the Jewish Arwane, uh, but these two Khazars did not belong to that branch. This paper we went into earlier, this is Diverse Genetic Origins of Medieval Steppe Nomad Conquerors. Uh, this is that paper about the Khazarian culture and going into some more burial graves and analyzing them. I just want to show you real quick some of the tables here. We have this table which shows you certain populations that are close uh, or how close they are to um, Khazars. I don't know if you can see this table here. I'm assuming on this table zero to zero is the Khazars and then what's closest to them. I think here the closest would be the Nogai. I I'm assuming if somebody knows how to read this table better than me, please uh, help a brother out. But I believe that's the Nogai people. And here we see um, admixture results of these burials. What, what do they match with in their admixture? So we see here a lot of Kazakhstan. Uh, we see, you know, mixtures of either Asian groups, Uralic groups, or Turkic groups. That's what it looks like to me. Turkic Uralic. And they also tested for Ashkenazi. We see one had just a little smidge of some Ashkenazi in them. And he had a Caucasoid skull. His haplogroup was H. So that's interesting to look at. His uh, That was his MT DNA. We looked at this table earlier. The peoples that make up Khazars. The people that they're genetically, that they autosomally would have been genetically related to. And that's, uh, I believe that's all the papers that I could find on Khazarian DNA for right now. Uh, I pray that you enjoyed this uh, DNA dive into Khazars, into Magyars, and uh, and also uh, journeying with me on this. We'll, we'll dive more into DNA as more information uh, reveals itself. I'm not quite done with it yet. The next video, I do want to examine the Jewish uh, RNA. So please stay tuned uh, for more. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you have anything to say. Stay blessed up and uh, stay tuned. Shalom. Peace.